even despite all the work we've had, there's a little bit of excess nail there. And if you can buy a pair of uh, cheap nail clippers from any of the uh, pet shops around the area, then all you need to do is just clip off that little white bit at the end. Some dogs do have dark nails, but if you take off about a sixteenth of an inch and keep the nails really down to a minimum, that's uh, you have far less risk of, of incurring any foot trouble. And although these kelpies are very tough feet, we always ensure the nails are kept down to a minimum. But that's Gem, you can see very, very well muscled and all ready to go. Probably a fraction over a normal running weight, but the first night's lamping will uh, we'll sort that out. A real pleasure to see a dog at that level of fitness and uh, she's ready, th ready for anything that comes her way now during the season. I think what she's saying here is, come on boss, let's go lamping. In our first video, Purdish Progress, what you saw there was a young dog being taught basic obedience. Now in this particular video, hopefully what you will see is that basic obedience gradually uh, being coupled with field craft to produce a top quality all-round lurcher. This dog here is Rob Moore's Outback Rule, runner in numerous field trials around the country and just look at the concentration of this dog you can see why the judges favour a dog like this absolute and total concentration when ferreting he's standing well off the warren there's half a dozen nets down around that warren and the dog is standing back perfectly still and just look at the speed of that cover when a rabbit bolts and hits the net the dog is onto it in a flash the rabbit undamaged the net undamaged and that really is a quality ferritin lurcher in action. Net back on, dog back in position. And again, another example of a lurcher working with nets. This time it's myself with Jem in the 1999 field trials over in Cheshire. And it's a netted up warren, seven or eight holes to this one, and the judge asking to see how the dog behaves when, he's got, when you've actually got nets down. You can see she's standing very still, just as rooted, nice and quiet, totally focused on what's happening in front of her, and just waiting and anticipating the bolt. And my particular preference is that when a rabbit bolts to get the dog over it quickly very often a rabbit will kick out of a net particularly if you're working in uh, in woodland where it's, uh, sticks and twigs and things can cause the net not to burst properly but just to let you see that uh, and let the judges see that she's not damaged that rabbit i deliberately take him out of the net while he's still alive you can see totally undamaged get him dispatched get your nets back on and then hopefully get the dog back in position and wait for a second bolt. But that's how a lurcher, in my view, should work with the nets. Not, inter not to get onto the warren interfere, but to be able to stand back and just wait and watch. And the thing to remember is a lurcher can always get to that netted rabbit quicker than you can. And uh, if you're working on a hedge row and you've got a dog at one side of the hedge and yourself at the other, it's, it's really a necessity that the dog is quick to get to a, a bolted rabbit and you can see the bitch there just settling back and waiting for the next one to come. This time we've got a pair of dogs on the warren but again you can see both the dogs settled, no need for a slip lead or a leash of any kind. Jim there just standing quietly, the rabbit bolts behind Purdy, she's straight onto it and again the rabbit no damage whatsoever. This time I'm holding the old dog back so that uh, see Purdy covers that rabbit, as soon as she realises it's netted she immediately leaves it alone and there again perfect, no damage to the rabbit, no damage to the net. Purdy is already very well educated towards ferreting with nets. Now how this comes about is a mixture of the early obedience that we taught her which gave the dog the patience to wait and also the response to command which means when she actually catches a rabbit and you give her the command to leave it she automatically does so obviously as time goes on 
and her experience draws, there is no need for command. The dog realises when you lay nets like that, that she's only required to stand still, watch the warren, cover the bolts, and as soon as I get to the rabbit, she can safely walk away and fix her eyes back on the warren again. But in this next section of film, we're ferreting without nets, and that requires something very different. Now here we've got both dogs working a very, very large warren. It's not advisable to work a warren like this without nets, but we did this particularly for the film and to show how an experienced dog can anticipate a rabbit bolting. That's providing, of course, you give the dog the full run of the warren. There's no point in keeping the dog back in these situations. And you can see Jem, they're sensing a rabbit about to bolt. She's got him before he's even cleared the hole. Retrieves it back to me and she's straight back to work again. And almost before I've got time to dispatch the first rabbit, she's done exactly the same again and caught another one. Now this obviously is a very, very experienced dog. This is a 15, 20 hole warren that we've got here. And that dog, on both occasions, recognised from the sound she was hearing below ground exactly where the rabbit was about to bolt from. Purdy watching and learning all the time. We move a little bit further down the same uh, the same bank side, and we come to another warren where, again, it's a sizable one, and again, the dogs have marked and said that the rabbit's there, and uh, we enter the ferret, and you can tell from the dog's reaction that a rabbit's on the move straight away. Now this time, keep your eye on Purdy because as she circles around the warren, watching and anticipating a bolt, a rabbit out under her feet there and straight away she's made the catch and now she's learnt the lesson that Jem has been trying to teach her, she knows now what to expect. We move along again and here you can see, get some idea of the size of these warrens, these really are uh, very very big rabbit warrens indeed, they covered a, a vast area and when you've got a couple of ferrets to ground in a warren like this you've got probably four or five rabbits on the move at the same time which um, it does require some considerable um, concentration from your dog when you've got that sort of action going on below ground but you can see these dogs now are totally focused. Purdy has learnt the trade of a good ferreting dog, she realises that uh, when there's action below ground, you never look away for a second, and there there's a rabbit bolted. But once he gets on that steep downhill run, there's very, very few lurchers will catch a rabbit running down the steep, a steep slope like that. But the dogs are quickly back, and uh, still showing signs of, uh, of movement in the warren. That would indicate we've still got more rabbits there. Well, the ferret's been in a while, so I come in with the locator, and we have a look. But you can see that even whilst I'm trying to locate the position of the ferret, the dog's concentration never breaks. They're totally focused on what they're doing. Now how Jem realised that that rabbit was going to bolt some 10 feet away from where we were, I don't know. But it just shows you the, uh, the instinct and the intuition of these dogs. And of course when the ferret shows, that's a sign of a good lurcher. The lurcher shows no aggression whatsoever towards the ferret. Here again one of these massive warrens where we've actually spaced the dogs out to give them a better advantage and uh, it's almost certain that any rabbit spot from it will run downhill towards that uh, patch of gorse you can see at the bottom. If a rabbit clears a hole here there's no chance of a dog catching it and sure enough there goes a rabbit. Purdy misses her opportunity and he's home and dry. You're never going to catch a rabbit on these sort of slopes. It actually the gradient on uh, on this hillside is much steeper than it looks even on camera so you can imagine that's a very steep slope and it requires a sensible dog to work on this area I've seen many lurchers over the years come to grief running down these steep hills especially when you've got rock scree and that kind of thing um, as obstacles but again we've got a big warren we've got a lot of rabbits moving at the same time the dogs totally focused on the job once you've got this sort of concentration from the dog, you know you've got a real good ferreting dog, but even dogs as experienced as this can be in the wrong place 
at the wrong time. They'd obviously following one particular rabbit and uh, the one that emerges is obviously being pushed by one of the other ferrets and uh, although a bolt looks imminent when the rabbit actually does come out of the warren he does take the dogs by surprise. And there he goes but no sooner is out he's back into the same warren again. Well we've bagged a few rabbits now we've got a reasonable amount of rabbits off this uh, of this particular piece of bank and there the dogs have bolted one and he's gone again he's gone down for that gorse patch in the bottom there no chance of a catch but whilst he's away the ferret has actually brought a rabbit to the mouth of the hole the rabbit's hesitated for a split second the ferret's managed to get hold of him and as we uh, as Ian comes back with the camera there you'll see just in time to catch me pulling a rabbit away from the ferret there so uh, all was not lost on that one Now we've just got a change of look here and the ferret looks like he's killed in on this one. We've not seen him for a, a few minutes. There's been no action at all and it looks like we've got a dig on our hands. Yes, that's where he is and when that ob stays there for any length of time you know you've got a dig. Well, that, we, we managed to get that one out of the hole and now we moved on. And you can see from the... Uh, the stuff that the rabbits have dug out, the sort of depth that they go to these warrens, they're very very deep and uh, they're very stony, they're not the ideal place for digging rabbits and it's much preferable to get rabbits to bolt if you can. That's one of the reasons um, for not using nets in these areas because if it looks like it's going to be a bad dig very often you'll find if you've not netted up the rabbits uh, are far more eager to bolt than if you've been walking around dropping 10 or 15 or 20 nets. But again, it looks like the ferret might have killed him. But the thing to do is to watch the dogs. Watch how the dogs never lose concentration. No matter how long you're waiting at a warren like this, a good ferreting dog will never lose concentration. He will keep his mind focused because occasionally you can be at a warren 20 minutes, half an hour, and think the rabbit's being killed, and then out of the blue, two or three rabbits will bolt so it's vital that the dog is always focused and always got his mind on his job and there sure enough just when we think that uh, we're digging a rabbit bolts but fortunately for the rabbit he just makes it to the next warren before Jem picks him up. This is something that I like to see a clear mark that's Jem marking a warren and you can't mistake a mark like that if a dog says a rabbit's at home and marks him that way then you can be pretty sure there's a rabbit there. Again this time Jem and Purdy uh, marking a warren, Purdy getting in on the act and again a clear indication that you've got rabbits at home. Having travelled around the country rabbit catching over a number of years there's no doubt in my mind that terrain can make a big difference to the number of rabbits caught. Now the footage that you've watched so far with the ferreting was all shot in the north of England and when you're ferreting around um, the Yorkshire Dales and that area there's no doubt that rabbits are easily caught on these uh, in these areas but the next section we're going to travel down south and we're going to travel to uh, one of my hunting mates area Rob Moore he lives around the uh, Horsham and Hampshire area and there unless a dog has got the speed you're just not going to catch many rabbits as you'll see in this next clip another ball the dogs make a catch together now when you've got well trained lurchers you should be able to get a retrieval like to tell one of the dogs to leave and the other one bring it in and just to let you see there the rabbit's totally undamaged again another one both dogs on it this time it's Purdy who makes a catch Jem loses all interest and Purdy brings a rabbit straight back in now here we're ferreting on uh, in the sandy earths of Hampshire and this is on a, a sheep pasture the grass is, is close cropped and this is where the speed of those racing whippets really comes into play we've got a rabbit there bolted he's almost made it to the hedge that's about a 75 yard dash and the dogs have just caught him before he made the edge and uh, when you get two lurchers working together like this there's no absolutely no need if the dog's being properly trained to have the dogs playing tug of war with rabbits. You can see that rabbit was caught by two dogs but was still alive and undamaged when it was returned. Again, 
you just look at the amount of sand outside these wallens shows how deep they are and again we're even nearer to that hedgerow so the dogs have got to be really on the best of fitness to catch rabbits the rabbits away again it's going a mad dash for that hedge and they've just caught him again in time difficult to say which dog made the catch but i have a feeling that jem just got there ahead of purdy and in fact it's jem who ends up bringing the catch back no matter how fast the lurcher is there's some rabbits that are just that bit faster and this fella here proved that despite the speed of our two lurchers he was never going to be caught and although he almost ran into ian he ended up back in we left that one to run another day now this is a big warren and uh, we're standing well back letting the dogs work it out for themselves you saw a rabbit appear there and suddenly Jem's intuition tells her that that's the area to be in but even then the rabbit takes her unaware and despite the speed of these two lurchers he makes it to safety One thing that we've learnt as we've travelled to various areas of the country uh, to do a spot of rabbit catching is that you must allow dogs time to acclimatise in different areas. Some dogs are particularly bad travellers so if you were travelling 60, 70 or more miles to an area to, to hunt rabbits then my advice would be to set off early even the day before if possible and give your dog time not only to get over the journey but also perhaps half an hour to get used to the lay of the land that is about to work and no one understands this better than field trial competitor Rob Moore Rob's travelled several times from the very bottom of the country to places like Cheshire, Scotland and Yorkshire to run his dog in competitive events and uh, in saying that that's where we're going back to now we're going to have a